Hello everyone, welcome to Earth Navigation channel and this is our radio navigation series. So let's understand why radio airs and radar systems are essential part of aviation. So in early days of aviation, aircrafts were flown with visual references to ground. But it was not possible to get the visual reference when flying through clouds or flying over the ocean or flying during night time. So, with time, different types of radio aids and radar systems were developed. They provide reasonable navigation accuracy. But in modern aviation, satellite navigation systems are becoming standard. We still need terrestrial systems as a backup. So, we have different types of radio aids and radar systems such as VOR, AWR, DME and so on. To understand these systems clearly, we need to first understand the behavior of radio waves and pulses as this is the basic of all the radio aids and radar systems. So in this particular video, we will be studying about how radio waves are produced, what is the meaning of polarization and what is the relationship between frequency and wavelength. So to understand how radio waves are produced, we need to understand something about direct current and an alternating current. Current is basically flow of electric charge and this charge is carried by an electron. We all know that electron carries negative charge. That means it will be repelled by a negative polarity and gets attracted towards the positive polarity. That means electron will always flow from negative towards positive. On the other hand, if we talk about current, current flows in the opposite direction of an electron. So current always flows from positive towards negative. In case of direct current, we can say that polarity does not change. That means the current will always flow in one direction only. So now when we consider current flowing through a circuit, it is going to flow in one direction only. Okay, so this is how it will look like. This is going to produce a wave. How that wave will look? So wave produced by direct current will look something like this. As you can see, the polarity does not change. Hence the wave is going in one straight direction. Now what happens in an alternating current? Again current flows from positive towards negative. So this is how the current should flow. But it does not stay there. It is coming back. That means now the polarity which was negative initially is become positive and the other one is negative. That means polarity keeps on changing and this is what happens in an alternating current that polarity changes. So now let's consider a current passing through a circuit in case of alternating current. This is how the current will flow. The direction is not constant. Okay, it keeps on changing due to change in polarity. So eventually it is going to produce again some kind of wave. Okay, how that wave will look? Wave produced by alternating current will look something like this, which is on your right side. Okay. Now why the design is this way, okay? What happens is in case of alternating current, we know that current is flowing initially in one direction like this. So half part of the wave, okay? Let me just overlap this thing. So this much part of the wave is produced in the initial direction of current. And when polarity changes in the reverse direction, other half, is produced like this okay these two halves will make one cycle okay and this is our radio wave which is also known as electromagnetic wave so a radio wave or an electromagnetic wave is combination of two components that is electric and magnetic electric is indicated by e and magnetic is indicated by h in few reference books Okay, 
now that we know any time a current is passed through a wire it produces electromagnetic field it is oscillating okay as you can see both the fields are oscillating they are always perpendicular to each other so electric field and magnetic fields will always be perpendicular to each other in this diagram you can see transmitter is vertical and electrical is going in vertical direction on the other hand magnetic is traveling in horizontal plane the orientation of electric component defines the polarization because electric field is usually stronger than the magnetic field now let's see what is polarization so polarization is basically plane of electric field and it is dependent on plane of an area so whatever is the orientation of an area electric field will travel in that direction okay now we can say that if transmitter is vertical electrical component will travel in vertical direction this does not eliminate the magnetic component okay magnetic is still present and since electric and magnetic travel perpendicular to each other in this case magnetic will be horizontal okay so for this particular part we can say since transmitter is vertical hence electrical component will go in vertical plane magnetic is still present so magnetic will go in horizontal plane but now we have to define polarization and polarization is totally the orientation of electrical component or the direction in which electric component travels so polarization in this case will be vertical okay on the other hand we have horizontal transmitter so electric component will travel in horizontal plane so this is how the electric component will go magnetic is still present and in this case it will go in vertical direction okay so this will be our magnetic component now to define polarization we can say that transmitter is horizontal hence electric component will travel in horizontal plane but we still have magnetic component present so magnetic will be vertical but to define polarization we will look at the electric part which is horizontal hence polarization will be horizontal now let's see what is circular polarization okay we have seen that electric component travels in vertical or horizontal dependent on the orientation of area okay but we also have something known as dipole antenna which we will be studying in further lectures with that what happens is we get circular polarization so as you can see in the first diagram that the arrows which you can see here are going in all directions okay now whether it is clockwise and anti clockwise is totally dependent on the side from which you are looking at it okay so let's consider that this is the source okay and the other end is receiver now if someone is standing over here for that person this arrow which is moving over here okay this arrow goes in clockwise direction and that is why this is right hand pattern okay so right hand pattern is also known as clockwise direction if you are looking at it from the source in the other diagram again same thing let's consider this end as a source and other end as a receiver okay again we can see that electric is going in all direction but in left hand pattern okay so if someone is standing over here he is going to feel that this arrow okay which is moving over here is going in anti clockwise direction okay so this is known as left hand circular pattern this goes in anti clockwise direction now let's understand few terminologies which are related to radio wave first let's label the diagram positive and negative side and also the horizontal line which is our time axis now let's consider the length of time axis as 1 second now when electric current is passed through a wire it will produce a radio wave this wave 
travels at a constant speed in normal medium that speed is 3 into 10 raised to 8 meter per second this is also the speed of light okay now let's see the first definition which is cycle cycle is one complete process so when we talk about the process let's start with zero it goes to maximum in positive direction that is 90 comes back to time axis 180 goes in the negative side maximum 270 and comes back to 360 this is our one complete process okay so complete process always starts from zero ends at 360 again the next process will start and it will keep on going like this okay so in this particular diagram we can say that we have two cycles or two complete processes this gives us the next definition that is frequency okay so frequency is number of cycles per second in this particular diagram this is our first cycle and then we have a second cycle in the time period of 1 second hence we can say that frequency is 2 hertz okay the reason is hertz because frequency is indicated by f and unit is hertz okay so for this diagram we can say the frequency is 2 hertz now comes the next definition that is wavelength wavelength is physical distance between two high points or two low points also known as crest and trough what is crest crest is highest points in the positive side okay so this 90 will be the crest and trough trough is the again highest point but in the negative side so this will be trough okay so when we talk about wavelength wavelength is basically a physical distance between these two high points or two low points okay wavelength is indicated by lambda and the unit of wavelength is meters okay so this horizontal line will be lambda and then comes the last definition that is amplitude amplitude is maximum distance from the time axis attained by a radio wave during its process so when we consider the horizontal time axis this is the maximum distance which a radio wave will attain during its whole process okay now remember the amplitude is same but it is in opposite direction okay so the magnitude will be same only the sign will be opposite now let's understand frequency and wavelength relationship okay first let's label the polarities for both the diagrams and also time axis so in both diagrams we are going to consider time length as 1 second okay now that we are already aware with the cycle definition and wavelength and all let us see how many cycles are there in this particular diagram okay so as we can see it starts from 0 90 180 270 and 360 okay so this is the first cycle so like this we have one more cycle okay so for this particular diagram we can say that there are two cycles per second hence frequency will be 2 hertz okay now in the second diagram let's see how many cycles do we have so we can see that the cycles are forming and again this is 0 90 180 270 and 360 okay you can see the cycle size is very small and like that we have second third and fourth cycle okay so in this particular diagram we can say we have four cycles per second okay hence frequency will be 4 hertz okay now if we plot the wavelength okay wavelength is let's consider two high points so this much will be the wavelength and in second diagram these are the two high points and the wavelength is shorter than the previous one that means here the wavelength is greater and in second diagram wavelength is shorter this gives us the relationship of frequency and wavelength 
because the speed of radio wave is constant so frequency and wavelength will vary how it will vary if frequency increases wavelength will decrease to keep the speed of radio wave constant okay so in first particular example we can see that frequency is 2 hertz okay so compared to the second diagram this frequency is bit lower since this frequency is low the wavelength is greater and in second example frequency compared to the first diagram is greater so wavelength is low this gives us the relationship of frequency and wavelength as frequency increases wavelength decreases and if frequency decreases wavelength increases okay so this is the end of our first video thank you so much